Hello everyone and welcome to this Calls for Confetti's YouTube channel. This is Dawn Pauly and I'm so glad you could join me. Today I'm using a bunch of the new products this Calls for Confetti just came out with. They have the most amazing pattern paper. I have two of them right here. This one on the right is called Speckled and it's basically a bunch of pastel colors with little speckles on them. This can, pad can be used all year round. It's not just for Easter. Some of the colors coordinate really nice with the other paper pack that I'm using. This other one is called Painted Pattern. You get stripes, polka dots, and squares with, with it, which is great. Like I said, some of the colors coordinate nicely with the other paper pad, but not all of the colors match exactly. I'm using the polka dot one right here, and I'm going to use the matching color from the speckled pack to go with it. Since I'll be making a shaker card, I'm going to use the new Easter confetti that just came out. I have the Easter confetti, the carrot confetti, and the iridescent green that I'm going to mix together later on in the video. I'll also be using the Easter egg die and stencil set. I'm only using the dies in this video today, but I just wanted to show you it does come with the stencils as well. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is die cut my big Easter egg from the polka dotted pattern paper. I'm not using the egg in this video, just the negative piece as my background. Then I'm going to take my speckled pattern paper and trim it down so it fits behind the egg cutout. This will be my background on the shaker card as you can see here. It fits nicely in the window behind the egg. Now to make the shaker window, I'll be using this cause for confetti's acetate. What I love about this acetate is that it comes with a protective layer on top of it so you don't get scratches all over it, which is really nice because I used to get scratches all over my acetate all the time, no matter how hard I tried not to. So what I do is I take my pick and I just scratch a little bit in the corner to see if the protective layer comes up. If it doesn't, then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the other side. And that's how easy it is to remove it. I decided to keep it on while I trim it down to fit behind the Easter egg opening. So I'll peel it off once I trim it down so I don't scratch it with my trimmer. Or you can use your scissors to trim it down. It really doesn't matter. I just thought the trimmer would be easier. Then I'm going to put some score tape on the back of the pattern paper. And I'll just peel off the release paper. And I'm going to take the protective sheet off of my acetate and then I'll adhere it to the back of the pattern paper. And this is going to make my shaker window. Now I need to build up my shaker window so that all of my confetti will move around really nice. So I put some foam tape all around the outer edge of the back of the pattern paper on top of the acetate. Once I do this, I peel off the release paper and then I'm going to put another layer of foam tape because I want it to be double thick so that my confetti shakes freely. You can use double thick foam tape if you have it, but I didn't have any, so that's why I just doubled it up. Once I have my foam tape done, I'm going to use a little bit of the anti-static powder from the It's No Secret wand. This is great to lightly put around the tape so that the confetti doesn't stick to the foam tape. Now for the fun part, I'm going to mix a little bit of each of the confetti. I'm using the Easter mix, which will be my main mix. Then I'm going to add a little bit more carrots because I wanted extra carrots in there. And to finish off the confetti, I added some of the iridescent green in there. Then I'm going to gently place the speckled paper over the back of the confetti. And that's how quick and easy it is to make a shaker card. Make sure to press down really good so that the paper adheres to it so none of the shaker bits fall out. And look at how nice it moves around using the double thick foam tape. And then to finish off the card, I'm going to adhere the shaker card front to an A2 sized card base. Now, here my card is basically done and all I had to do was add my sentiment to it. And then this is when things went kind of horribly wrong for my card. 
I'm going to show you the mistakes I made in hopes you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Not just for this card, but whenever you're going to use rub on transfers as a sentiment. I will start out by saying I was not originally going to use my rub on transfers, but decided to after I put my card together. And that was my first mistake. Never try to put rub on transfers onto the shaker front because the confetti makes it too bumpy and you can't really rub the sentiments all the way onto the acetate like I'm trying to do here. If you're going to use rub on transfers, it really needs to be on a flat surface. Just my personal experience with them. I'm using the Easter rub on transfers. They came in white and gold. I will tell you the second mistake I made was taking the protective backing off of the rub on transfers. I didn't realize that they would stick to pretty much anything they come in contact with. I realized it when I noticed some of the sentiments were missing sections. They had stuck to my glass board studio map. So here I am trying really hard to make this work so I wouldn't have to take my card apart. Do not even waste your time with this. It was much quicker for me to take my card apart than the time I wasted trying to make this work. The rub on moved and it messed it all up on me. So the bottom line is don't do this. So I ended up taking my card front apart and it was really easy to do. I just took off the top shaker and made a new top with a new piece of acetate. Now again, do not do what I did here. I laid my rub on transfers down with the protective backing, not on it, you know, without the protective backing on it. And they stuck to my glass board. I'm pointing these things out in hopes you won't make the same mistakes I did. I usually edit all my mistakes out, but I thought these were helpful mistakes. So that's why I left them in my video. Once I have the sentiment where I want it to go on the acetate, I lay it down and I use the popsicle stick that it comes with and I make sure to rub it really good so the entire sentiment adheres to the acetate. When I'm done rubbing it, I take the clear plastic off of it. To finish off the card, I put some liquid glue on top of the foam tape in case I have to move the top of the card around it all. This will help it to move easier. Then I make sure to press down really good so none of the shaker bits fall out and that's it. That's going to complete my card. Again, I only kept my mistakes in the video because I felt like it might help someone else that is new to using rub on transfers. While I'm not new to using them, I guess I just really wasn't paying attention. And let's face it, we all make mistakes along the way as we're making cards. I want to thank you for joining me on the This Calls for Confetti YouTube channel. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. And be sure to subscribe to This Calls for Confetti's YouTube channel and hit the bell so you get notifications on when new content is added. And don't forget to subscribe to their other social media platforms and check out their website for all their new releases. I want to thank you for stopping by and spending your time with me. Have a wonderful day.